Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, something's coming. And we're off. On a grey day, foggy day. Well, not so foggy really, but visibility's not brilliant. Well, visibility's good. See all that white thorn? Hello, what's this person doing? Waiting to be picked up. If you look on the right here, you'll see all the trees alternate white thorn, black thorn, white thorn, black thorn. This is the only time of year you can tell the difference. The white thorn obviously is the one that has the white flowers and the black thorn is the one that doesn't have the white flowers. So, there you go. Bit of country knowledge for you. I'd better put my uh, lights on. Don't want any complaints. You can hear a lot of noise coming from the back. It's because I've got a load of junk in the back. Well, I say junk. It's not junk at all. It's actually my daughter's prized possessions. The ones that uh, surprised the least. So with the last to be moved out of our house, so I had to go around and just clear up what they hadn't already taken. So it's rattling. So I apologise for that. So, we're going through what used to be apple country, but it's now God knows what country. Cabbage country, cauliflower country, wheat, barley, maize. Show me a horse trailer supply there on the left. If you want a horse trailer in Preston, Preston Village, we're in Preston Village now. 30 miles an hour. So third gear, yeah. That's the way. That's the, I haven't been on a speed awareness course, but someone who has been on a speed awareness course told me that was about the only useful thing. You know what, a speed awareness course is something you have to go on to avoid getting points on your license. And to be honest with you, it's a close, it's a close run thing because the, by the time uh, you paid for the speed awareness course uh, you probably would have been cheaper just going for the fine and the points not to mention taking a day off work so I'm going in a bit earlier than normal I'm actually early it's three minutes to eight by my unfit bit These are all new houses on the left here. They were all, uh, they were built on the site of um, a fruit packing uh, farm. That used to, in the summer, used to attract a cloud of flies, Drosophila. And uh, it got so successful it had to relocate. You know, it was, it was stuck right in the country on these tiny roads on little tight bends and they needed to get lorries down there which were larger and larger and larger a lot of them from Italy uh, in fact they even had uh, Italian signage at the, at, the, at the farm for the Italian lorries those on the left there are packing uh, crates for uh, apples they're stored like in big piles during the summer and in the autumn when they pick the apples, they uh, put the apples in them and load them onto lorries. And they're also extremely useful for um, anything else, you know, like storing uh, chopped wood and stuff like that. Or they make excellent compost heaps. So, what else can I tell you about my journey to work? That was the steepest, that was the, the sharpest corner. I think it's a competition. There's, we've got the old, because uh, of the old medieval enclosures act, the road winds up and down now. You can see some apple trees on the left there now. 
it's uh, the, the road winds uh, around the fields, yeah, uh, because the you weren't uh, you had to enclose all the fields, and so that made the path go wonky. So this is a typical left, right, left, right, 90 degree turn on the uh, around the fields. That, uh, this is the uh, spot where you lose uh, the internet. So if you're doing anything that requires the internet, for example, um, I don't know, making a WhatsApp telephone call or something, not watching YouTube because you're not allowed to watch YouTube in the car, uh, then that's where the, uh, the signal stops. Nice little thatch cottage on the right there. This is a pub, the Rising Sun. We went in there once, I think my wife knows the landlady or something. And we were playing pool and the bloke behind the bar came and told us to get off the pool table because some regulars had come in and they wanted a game of pool. And uh, so could we please uh, just get off, shove off. <laughs> so we never went back there again. Never went back there again. This is the problem. Look at this lot. Oh, mind you, they're bin lorries, so you can see some cars ahead because I think there's another bin lorry going the other way. I suppose you can't blame bin lorries, although you could. They could be a bit longer and a bit thinner, couldn't they? This is the worst. This is the worst corner. There's a nice old barn here. It's, I might have been thatched, they've tiled it now. They sell wood, you can see all the wood there. Tons of wood, dry seasoned wood. Forestry, I mean, you know, there's quite a lot of forestry around. Which you wouldn't think so, because there aren't that many forests, but I suppose there wouldn't be, would there? <laughs> I don't know who their supplier is. Perhaps they bring it in from abroad. This on the left here, the Dog and Duck, is a is a looks like a pub, but actually it's a massive caravan park. And they uh, they had a lot of land, so they started putting caravans on it. We're going over the River Stour. which is um. At one point, uh, northeastern Kent used to be an island. Uh, that's why they call it the Isle of Thanet, because it was an island. But then, this is in Roman times. Uh, but now, of course, the uh, river that sort of went round and isolated Thanet from the rest of Kent was um, bridged. Um, and so, uh, it's no longer an island, but it's uh, funny, it's still referred to as an island. And if you're flying, when Manston used to be uh, active, air traffic control. If you wanted to go on a sort of a, a clockwise or anti-clockwise flight around Kent, you, you used to call it around the island. You used to say, I'm going around the island. And air traffic control knew what you meant. You meant the Isle of Thanet. Even though technically, here's a bit of, here's a favorite fly tipping spot. Oh. All the hedges have been trimmed. That's the best time of year to trim the edges, really, early spring. Um, if, you do them, if you do them in the autumn, then... I think it's it. If you do them in the autumn, you have to do them again in the spring. Or if you do them in the spring, you don't have to do them in the autumn or something, I forget. This bridge used to have a, a, a traffic lights on it. Now coming this way, you've got priority over the oncoming vehicles, but the oncoming vehicles can't really see you. So, <laughs> God knows how long that's going to work. Rabbit leg in the road. This uh, 
the uh, this is the uh, we're, we're underneath some wires, some electric lines which uh, carry electricity from France. They've put in a massive new line. It was a big bone of contention at the time because uh, these pylons are massive and uh, they, they carry a lot of electricity. You know, really the, the, the sort of the backbone of the national grid uh, coming from France. France got obviously a lot, a lot of surplus electricity because they were. Um, this is the T junction of death. Let me just be quiet for a second. Oh, I think we're all right because I'm a bit earlier than normal. I don't know why my lights are on in the back. Perhaps the boots. That might be why that's making a load of noise. Perhaps the boots not shut. Okay. See all the ploughed fields now. The fields are all uh, nicely ploughed in preparation. They do have a ploughing competition. I mean, most places have a ploughing competition. But that's quite good fun. That's a good day out. You have to take a chair and a brolly. Uh, they have like uh, dogs, uh, dog, uh, you know, um, what are the whistling dogs called? Sheep dogs. And uh, stuff like that. Motorcycle shows and stuff. But the main thing is the ploughing and the farm machinery and everything. And it's quite, uh, you know, if you're at least a little bit interested in big machinery and tractors and sort of uh, like uh, anyway anything that's got a big horsepower so, so yeah so the electricity is coming from France and uh, they had two lines and one was went across the north of Ken and one, one went across the south and I think, and the whole thing was a complete charade. I mean, you could see that the only line that made any business sense was the north one, and uh, the south one was was a, a feint. It was a diversion. <laughs> it was never ever going to be uh, the one that they chose. But in order to say that they had a consultation, they put these two lines up and invited everyone to come along, and then. There was a bloke there from the council and the bloke there from the electricity board all feigning interest and pretending that it was actually a choice. And everybody got mad about the route that affected them the worst and uh, and hoped that the other route that didn't affect them at all was going to be the one that was chosen. And then, of course, they then announced that they were going to do what they were intended to do all along, which is the northern route. And uh, everybody in the affected by the northern route said oh gosh darn it and <laughs> everybody effect, you know that thought that they might be affected by the southern route said phew uh, well, yeah, but we've, we've got no sympathy with these other guys it was a fair competition and they lost you know so it sort of divided the community it uh, it prevented the entire community in Kent from uniting against having a bloody great I saw electricity line going right across, right, right through the middle of Run Kent, you know. So that was quite, you know, I, I watched that. I, that was quite clever how they did that. But I'm sure that's a well rehearsed playbook, you know. I mean, that's uh, this is the uh, A299 goes to North Kent coast, and if we were to carry straight on, on the left hand side would be Manston, the airfield. Um, But um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut left here, which will take us uh, eastward still, but around the north side of the airport. There's a nice new building on the left here, which I think is going to be a car showroom. But um, it's taken them a couple of years to build it. But uh, Adani Linev Group wherever that is. Anyway, it's in a nice location. So let's turn left. So all the uh, fudsters and the doom mongers who said that uh, the channel uh, Dover was going to be a complete nightmare have been proved completely wrong. 
Uh, in a second, we're going to go past the Manston facility that uh, was paid for at great expense by the taxpayers to, in the eventuality that there was a massive backup, and has now been stood down after three months because it's quite clear that it's not, you know, it's nothing that uh, requires the hiring of a large number of uh, hectares of uh, hard standing and thousands of people. That Manster Business Park and uh, all these buildings on the left hand side here were built in anticipation of this being an international airport, um, which is more, the runway is more than long enough to be an international airport. But um, it just never happened, it never had the transport links. So no one could get here to fly anywhere in the sort of volumes. This uh, Manston operation is now suspended as you can see. And they're just saying, uh, don't bother coming here. If you've got, if you've been told to come here, just get on the M20 and go down to Dover, which I think they're all doing anyway. So there's still a lot of cones here, a lot of cones, a lot of cell tower masts, and uh, it's been sold to a bunch of Americans, I think, broad oak. It's a lot of real estate, you know, there was a big tussle between people who are trying to keep it as an airport, which I rather like, and people who just want to turn it into housing for profit. And once you lose an amenity like this, you never get it back again. Now, in front of you, you have the hangars, which were converted to process the lorries, which used to come through here, but which don't anymore. But they've still got a bloke on the gate telling you not to come through. And then on the right side, oh, I'll show you in a minute. On the right side, what you'll see is the old terminal building. This is a, this is a helicopter business, Polar, that still operates from here. And on the left side was a bit of a, and some somebody enterprising as bought this little bit of scrap land and decided to house caravans on it because there's thousands of people who live in tiny houses who like to tow caravans and who uh, oh a Spitfire Museum in front of us We've got a Spitfire simulator that everyone raves about Polar, they're, they're on the left hand side there's a control tower, the old control tower. People have broken into that, been a bit vandalised, I suppose. Hardly surprising. And then um, down that road where we turned right back there, up that road, there's a load of MOD facilities and the, uh, where they do a ton of uh, secret stuff that you only get a hint of, you know. Just weird stuff. On the right here is the COVID testing facility. These are where the old terminal building was, where this bloke is on the gate. If you go in there and drive, do a drive through COVID test. That's open, uh, looks like 24 hours by the look of it, I don't know. There used to be thousands and thousands and thousands of um, uh, things that flags that have been tied on there when they were trying to the locals funnily enough were protesting against it being used as an airport now now if you look at that airport now right that reminds me of when I was a child uh, and that that's what Heathrow was like when I was a child Heathrow had like one or two buildings on the A4 and uh and a, and, a, and a wire fence that you could park up against and, and look through to see the planes. And look at it now, you know, I mean, uh, you know, look at look at the A4 now, the business that's along it and uh, the, the, the business that goes through Heathrow. And this place could be, this place is even closer to the continent than Heathrow. The only thing it's missing is a high-speed train connection. Uh, 
it needs a Manson Express. But, um, you know, the, the government built one for Stratford, didn't they? I don't see why they shouldn't build one for Manston. This is another road where we get priority because of that small village. They work on the basis that it's best to give cars priority to get out and, and restrict them to get in, you know. I don't think they quite understand the maths. There's a big pile of stuff on the right hand side there, which is sort of a, I don't know, grey aggregate or something. And on the right hand side here, you can't see it, right? But there's a massive great store of uh, industrial equipment, uh, tractors, caterpillars, diggers, uh, lorries and everything. If you turn right here, uh, and then it goes down into an old quarry. And the quarry is um, it's completely invisible. And people don't know that there's, there's about 200 diggers down that road, all parked up and, and all available for hire. But, um, it's completely invisible because it's in a big hole in the ground. This is a, a golf course and they did adventure golf, you know, for the kids. They had a big dinosaur on that left hand side there and the bloody dinosaur didn't want to be there. It, honestly, it hankered for the, uh, the open plains of East Africa and it decided to go back. So every time the wind blew, it, it had a go and, and moved a bit further and then eventually they had it. <laughs> this dinosaur was on the top of the ridge and it was tied down with cargo straps. This didn't really quite give the sort of the, the fun dinosaur-y vibe. So I think in the end they got rid of it. Probably it deteriorated a bit in the rain and the snow as well. But they've still, because uh, they're trying to they're still trying to do this thing. If you look on the left-hand side here, you'll see there's a Jeep, I think you can see it, with a sort of a crate through the roof. There's another golf ball, can you see it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, there it is, there it is, there it is. Jeep with a crate, a crate through the roof, adventure golf. Right next to a bloody great pile of hardcore. <laughs> oh, don't we do marketing well in this country. So, lots of uh, sort of new, well that, that was the new housing on the left, and then they they were coming into Thanet proper now, uh, Ramsgate, and uh, they're going to build lots more housing on the left as we go through. If you've got that road to the left, not this one, the, this one on the roundabout, is the ambulance station, which is good because it's literally only five minutes from the surgery. And now this is all industrial. And that's funny enough, which is where the surgery is. You well, see lots of schools here. This on the left-hand side, or over, over towards the left-hand side here, is where they're going to be building all the new housing. And I used to advertise on this roundabout. Um, and it used to bring a few people in. Not that many. On the distance over there to the left now is the uh, Westwood Cross Shopping Centre. Massive shopping centre. Well, not massive. Actually, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, piss poor by regional standards. And obviously now half the shops are shut. And the other half of the shops that aren't shut are, are closed. As we enter the Royal Harbour Academy, which has been renamed more times than Sellafield Nuclear Power Station. Or should I say wind scale? Due to the high caliber of the teaching and the pupils. As soon as nobody will send their children to a particular school, because it's got such an appalling reputation, this state solution is to rename it. Okay, in the big orange building. Wee! But I think I'm, I think I'm here early, so I might have to let myself in. All right, lovely. Nice to talk to you. That's my journey to work. 
I've done it every day for the last six or seven years. Uh, hopefully no, not too much longer, eh? I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.